All right. That's great. Let's see if we can get there this way. I hope so. Another little bird here. It's nice view with the mammoths in the distance. So statues, obviously. Phone call again. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Pond. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukol at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. All right. Wonder what Oscar is thinking right now. He doesn't know what's going on, but I guess we could have tried telling him. But we're off to see the lecture now first, and then we'll wind up the train and uh, move along on our journey to find Hans, uh, who is now the rightful owner of the Va Volodilen, um, the Vorarlberg company that makes the automatons. Which we are trying to buy for an American toy company. a little bit weird with the music from the game and then the music from the bandstand playing at one okay um i assume let's get up here no Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Seems there are not that many students interested in it. Or maybe not many students in the university attending. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukols date back to the last Ice Age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. This people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. 
They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. You cult forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. She draws what she sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yukol people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukols learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yuko Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice art is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. The island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yukol population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live, or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lectures should you so require them. Yes, I'd love a copy. I wonder why I decided to sit right next to the projector though.
it was a bit loud. Don't know why the game decided that was a great idea to have that noise over the lecture the whole time. Uh, it was interesting and even if you haven't played the game you can rightfully assume that uh, Hans with his obsession for mammoths is a uh, has made his way to Siberia to visit the Yukol and maybe learn more about the legend of the still living mammoth. Uh, let's go to the lab and pick up our doll and the uh, lecture notes. I won't read through them, I'll just uh, pick them up. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. So this legend um, is basically that they built an ark which would automatically return with mammoths in it. It would go to the mythical island called Siberia, with a Y in this case. And uh, the ship would periodically appear and, and carry mammoths. And then a hundred or so years ago, the Ark returned earlier than expected and empty. And that's how eventually it became a legend. People didn't see it appear anymore. Professor, it's me. I have come to pick up the mammoth doll. The doll is waiting for you there, Miss Walker. <laughs> Please take good care of it. Don't worry. I'm beginning to get quite attached to it myself. Can I trouble you just a little longer? With pleasure, Kate. I'm all ears. Oh, uh... Not sure if I've got anything useful to say, but let's try. I must congratulate you for your lecture. You were right. The subject is absolutely fascinating. I never believed that mammoths could be so interesting. What you heard was only the tip of the iceberg, my dear. But if I have at least awoken a passion in you, I'm only too proud. Did Hans Varlberg agree with your hypothesis on the Yukels being able to tame mammoths? Now, Hans was no man of science. His pathological obsession was to find mammoths that were still in existence. Such a hypothesis is somewhat overblown, don't you think? You don't believe in it yourself? Mammoths died out thousands of years ago. Of this, we are certain. Today, the only mammoths in Siberia are frozen ones. Huh? Do you know where Hans might have gone after his stay here in Barakstadt? No. But I would not be surprised if he left in search of the Yukols, or what is left of them today. Neither would I. Let's pick up our doll and uh, see if we can move on. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. That was a very nice professor. Maybe you should think of retiring, though, if he's that old. Okay, got the doll. I don't think there's anything that we need to do in the university anymore. So we'll just go back to our train, use the wind-up device that we found earlier, and move along.
across the bridge again, I think. 